Nearly three years ago, COVID-19 was gaining traction in China. Within months, the virus would just upend lives all over the world. Here in New York, Health Commissioner Dr. Dave Chosky led the city's response to the pandemic, including its historic campaign to vaccinate more than 6 million New Yorkers. And Dr. Chosky joining us now, not through the box of a <laughs> Zoom or anything, because when the pandemic started, that's how we got to know you. That's right. Well, this is a long time coming. It really is. It's a particular honor to be here in your last week. And I just want to say thank you on behalf of New York City. Senator Booker tried to claim you for New Jersey, but, um, <laughs> but let me do the same for New York City because you're, you're one of us, Lori. Well, I really, really appreciate that. And you were definitely one of us during the pandemic. We looked to you so much. In the beginning, though, you know, no one really thought it was going to turn to be out to turn out to be what it did become. Mm. Did you feel that, too? Yeah, I mean, this virus has been wily and it's been unpre unpredictable uh, at so many turns, you know, through the pandemic. So uh, I had a lot of humility in thinking about the virus as as an opponent, as mm -hmm. one that has caused so much devastation and suffering. Uh, and that's something that I think we have to carry forward with us. When we heard the president the other day uh, claim that the pandemic was over, we still know there are still people that are dying of COVID. When you heard that, what was your first reaction? Well, my first reaction is as a doctor, you know, thinking about my patients, uh, the folks who I know will remain at risk from COVID-19, and the fact that, um, you know, we, we have a different message for them, that they do need to take some steps to continue protecting themselves particularly uh, the new bivalent booster, um, but also some other steps that we know, you know can reduce risk. Mm -hmm. With that said, we are in a categorically different place in the pandemic, largely thanks to vaccination and all the steps that New Yorkers took to protect ourselves over the past uh, almost three years. So we have to hold both of these things in our minds at the same time. I think there's a lot of confusion sometimes when it comes to the booster. Mm. Should we get the booster that exists now? Should we get the one that is yet to come or the one that's getting ready to get approval right now? Like how is our life going to be one of endless boosters? I don't think it will, um, but there is a clear message for this upcoming season, you know, for the fall and the winter, mm -hmm. the new bivalent booster um, which uh, is matched up to the variants that are circulating in the United States and in New York City, um, that's a very important way to protect ourselves. So in October, along with getting your pumpkin, get, get some <laughs> doses of protection as well, um, the COVID-19 booster and your flu shot too. With the new administration, you stayed on until March, right? Yes. Um, sort of guiding a little bit and just making sure that there was a smooth transition. Since we're now in the middle of, of their own decision making, do you feel as if they're making the right decisions? We look at, you know, there's not the tracking that we saw certainly during the de Blasio administration. We're seeing more leniency when it comes to masks. I mean, things are truly opening up. Yeah, well, we are in a different place, and so they have to make some decisions, you know, based on different parameters than the ones that, uh, that we were making. Um, what I would say to them and what I do say to them is that let's not forget, you know, what helped us get through the pandemic, mm -hmm. including vaccine requirements, you know, where they're warranted, um, but really doing everything that we can to support New Yorkers making the healthy choice for themselves. I have, I want to ask you about polio quickly. Where, where do things stand? Well, here's what I'll say about polio. Every single case of polio is a preventable tragedy. This is not something that we should be talking about in your last week um, because we have a very safe and effective vaccine against it. So the most important thing that people can do, make sure that your child is vaccinated against polio. Let's support our pediatricians um, to get that done uh, so, that, um, so that we can uh, just you know, enjoy our mm -hmm. children and our families. Do you miss being the top doc? Uh, I, I miss it sometimes. It was such an honor and a privilege, um, but I also love getting to spend more time with my family, um, you know, take care of my patients and take care of some of the other people who and are And you're getting ready to, to take me. it, run, doing the marathon, right? That's right. I'm running my first ever marathon. For, for anyone else who's out there who um, maybe can derive a little bit of inspiration, the day after I stepped down from my job, I could barely run 10 minutes on the <laughs> treadmill. So if I can do it, you're ready, huh? everyone can do it. 
Oh, Dr. Dave Choksi, so good to have you on. Thank really you for a pleasure me. to have you in the studio and meet you in person. And, and thank you for what you did for this city. Thank I'm you. I'm telling you, you were a guiding light. I appreciate that. But congratulations on your amazing tenure. Thank you so much.